Hi-Fi have developed quite a reputation for their outlandish, futuristic designs. So is their third car keeping up the tradition? Let's meet the Hi-Fi Y. That's right, this is the Hi-Fi Y, the third model from this young, techy, and very dynamic design-led brand. Now, of course, this model is definitely more mature than the others. You can tell that just from the color, because of course, we've got a gray here compared to the light blue and purple of the Z and the bright orange that we had of the Hi-Fi X, but it has maintained some of those family features, including the full-width daytime running light. Of course, these ISD LEDs down here that allow you to show custom icons and little dancing graphics and things like that. We've also got the same two-tone look. So we've got the light gray across the top here, we've got dark gray down there. You can get purple down there as well. And of course, the trademark butterfly doors as well here at the back with the roof lifting up there and the door opening here as well. That's very cool. Although you'll notice that instead of having the suicide doors of the previous two models, we have got a more conventional setup this time. Now, all the doors are electric, including the front ones as well. They've got sensors here under the window and at the bottom there to make sure they don't open into other obstacles. So very, very techy. Now, we also have 21 inch alloys here down at the front. That means that we have the performance version, which is twin motors. We'll talk about those later. We've also got up here a 128 line Hersai LiDAR system to support the ADAS functions of this car. That will look 180 meters into the distance to try and keep this car safe. Very, very cool from the front. Let's go and check out the back. Coming towards the rear, I'm going to stop at the rear axle because like on all the other Hi-Fis, we also get rear wheel steering on this car as well, up to 5.4 degrees. So at high speed, these will turn the same direction as the front wheels to almost crab across the lanes for better stability. And at slow speeds, they'll turn in opposition to the front wheels to give you a turning radius of just 5.6 meters. Very useful to have in the city. And here at the back, we definitely have a more conventional look than the Z and the X, certainly sort of more traditional. We do still get an enormous rear spoiler, no rear wiper because they channel high speed air under here to try and clear the rear window instead. We also get cameras up here because we get the same digital rear view mirror as in other Hi-Fi models. And of course, we get a full width daytime running light because we always do on Chinese cars with a very attractive Y sort of dolphin tail there on the end. What I particularly like are these little wire details in here, like interwoven wires. They are very attractive up close. Now we don't get a swipey foot boot, which is an interesting one for a high-tech brand, but we do get an electric tailgate. And in here, we get 692 liters of space, an enormous trunk, and I believe that is class leading in this particular area. Under here, you get 47 liters of space under the boot as well, so plenty you can do in there, and you can fold the rear seats 60-40 to get up to 1,848 liters of space very family oriented. You can take your skis in there, take loads of suitcases, whatever. It is a very, very big space. For frunk enthusiasts, there's also an 85 litre storage space under the bonnet. And I think it's a good looking car, certainly more mature than the other Hi-Fi models that we've seen, but in a very good way. Now, if you've watched our previous Hi-Fi reviews, you'll know to expect a feature list longer than your arm, actually longer than two arms. They'd certainly pack a lot of technology into these cars. And this one is no exception. So strap in, we've got a lot to cover. We'll start with the screen real estate. And just like all the other Hi-Fi's, we get a lot of screens in here, starting with a 12.3 inch screen behind the steering wheel. That gives you usual driving functions, a bit of sat nav on there. You can also change the functions on the right side. That's supported by a 22.9 inch heads up display there that is very bright, very large, and very useful as well. In future, you'll also be able to move your maps onto that heads up display as well. And it's the largest in its class. As well as that, you get, as I mentioned earlier, the 9.2 inch rear view camera up here, which is very clear. And in the middle here, we get a 17 inch portrait style screen, much like that on the Hi-Fi X, but with one key difference. If we swipe from the side here, click on Hi-Fi Bot, we can adjust the angle of this screen by 25 degrees. So not quite the three-way adjustment that you had on the Hi-Fi Z, but you can adjust it for pitch, 
so that you can try and keep the glare off the screen. This is a 3K screen and has 1000 nits of brightness, so it's certainly very bright even in any lighting. It runs on the 8155 Snapdragon processor, which sounds impressive because that's class leading, right? Well, no, because the Y actually goes one better. On this screen over here, our fifth screen, 15 inches, this one comes with the Snapdragon 8250 processor, which is actually twice as fast as the 8155. It's basically a laptop computer built into your car. You can watch TV on there, movies. You can also play video games. It's got its own Bluetooth connection, so you can connect to your, speak, your headphones. You can even connect your PlayStation controller and play racing games on there as well. Super impressive and, as it says up here, a very smart cockpit. We get a sound system to match as well. 25 speakers, you'll know that Hi-Fi use Meridian sound system, one of the best in the world. 25 speakers, two of which are here in the headrest. The others are around, they support Dolby Atmos 7.1.4, so seven clusters of speakers, one subwoofer, and four speakers in the roof as well. That's what 7.1.4 means. I learned something new today, right? Yeah, so that's a very good system. If you don't go for the highest spec system, you get 14 speakers around the car, also Meridian, so still a very good system. Hi-Fi do like to remove a lot of physical switch gear. So we do still get our window openers here. We also get our chair adjustments there and one down the side here and a couple on the steering wheel, but they move most of the functionality into this screen here, which as I mentioned earlier, runs on 8155 and Hi-Fi's new OS 3.0. It does have the smart functionality that I quite like to adjust your temperature down here simply by swiping your finger on the toolbar. But one thing that this card does have that's very special is if you hold down, let's say here on the QQ Music, we now get a customizable dashboard, sort of widget display here. Let's get rid of QQ Music and the temperature there. Let's instead go for the chair, heating, ventilation, and massage. I can drag that onto the dashboard, and now I've got a custom dashboard as I want it. I can make the maps full screen, I can make them a smaller screen, I can move them somewhere else. Really gives you a lot of customization there. Onto the steering wheel, which is refreshingly round for once. No flat bottoms or tops here, no hexagonal shapes, just a circle, back to the good old days. We get the same center boss, the two-spoke boss of the Hi-Fi Z with the capacitive touch buttons. Not really a fan of the capacitive touch button, but at least they're textured so you know where your thumb is. On the left side here, you get your autonomous driving. We can't test that out today because it's not active. Hopefully we'll get a chance to test that in the future. And another very interesting thing on the steering wheel here is a light bar across the top. If I put my indicator on, let's see, I have an orange light moving across the steering wheel in the direction of your indicators. But overall, the cabin ambience and the feel is certainly a lot more premium than in the Hi-Fi Z, which we thought was a slight step down on the Hi-Fi X. So even the stalks here, these sort of metal style barrels, they're quite attractive and they do feel good to the touch. You get sort of metal effect on the center console here and on the doors, of course, and your Meridian speakers. We get Nappa leather on the steering wheel. We've got the Nappa leather chairs as well. You can get normal leather or Nappa leather on the chairs. These come with heating, ventilation, and massage, which you can find in this menu here. You can cycle through all those. In the back, you just get heating. We get leather up here, microfiber all around the ceiling, soft touch materials up there and down here in the doors. Even this apparently is a plastic material, but it doesn't feel like it, it's squidgy. So it does feel premium in all the touch points, which is very, very good. Now in here, this is the cool part in the center console, where you'd normally have some space, and you can get space if you don't go for this option, you instead get a fridge that can also be a heater. So that will go from minus six degrees, if you want ice cream, up to plus 50, if you want to keep your takeaway hot. That's pretty impressive. We get a wireless charger here in front and twin USB-C sockets there. A couple of cup holders, of course, in the middle and a bit of space underneath the dashboard there. The driving position, I would say, does feel fairly high. So of course this is an SUV, so you're feeling more high than low. I would say the only gripe I have is the base cushion doesn't feel quite as long as maybe I would like. I would like that adjustment just to get it up to the back of the crux of my knee. But you can get into a comfortable position and you get a lot of reach on this steering wheel as well, which of course you adjust in the system here. On the right side, you can control it with this button up and down and then out and in. Now, one of the things you can never get tired of on a hi-fi is the gracious way that you can step into the back seats thanks to those butterfly doors that allow you to climb in absolutely no problem at all now i'm just going to pull open or pull close i should say the rear door here just enjoy the sunlight and the warmth of beijing summer right there as we talk about this interior 
which, okay, we've got the black colour, so it's a little bit darker than if you get the lighter coloured, but it's certainly plenty spacious. Front seat is in the welcome stance, as low and as far back as it will go. I've got plenty of foot room down there, plenty of knee room as well, and of course with the roof open, plenty of headroom, but even with the roof closed, there's plenty of room. I'll show you that later. In fact, even in the middle here, where it's certainly much closer to my head, there's still room above my hair there, so I'm not touching the roof, which is really, really good. Now we get an optional tray table here on these two back chairs, 10 kilograms of weight that will handle, or about six MacBook Pros apparently, which is an interesting method of choice for measurement. You get pockets on the back of the chairs there and hooks integrated into the chairs. You get ventilation down here, you get buttons here to open up the top or bottom parts of your door, or you can combine them so they open at the same time as well. We get, of course, a rear armrest with a pair of cup holders. And down here at the front, we get a little tray with two USB-C sockets. Something else that's quite interesting in the back of this car is this up here. This is called Hi-Fi Port. And Hi-Fi Port is probably a answer to the Li Auto screens in the back of their cars, because in here, this is a multifunctional slot, essentially a glorified tripod, but you can plug in a few things. You can plug in some lights so you can do some work here in the back of the car. You can plug in a projector that points backwards and can project onto a screen outside the car so you can watch the cinema in the back of your car, tapping in to that Chinese sort of camping idea. And then you can also plug into there a little TV screen as well so people in the back of the car can play video games or watch TV. So entertain the kids basically. Quite a neat solution I would say to something that came later in the development. But no, it's overall, it's very, very spacious. Let's just bring that roof down so you can see how much headroom I have. See, so look at that. Plenty of headroom there. Got a light, a, a window above my head, window above this side here, and a window across the front two seats. Overall, particularly spacious. 51.6 centimeter cushion here, I believe as well. So actually plenty of support under my thighs. And of course the lovely soft hi-fi neck pillows. I don't know, I think I'd quite enjoy being in the back of here for a drive, but I want to be in that chair to see how it drives. Climbing behind the wheel of the Hi-Fi Y, it's very easy to fall into the same mindset that you would have driving the Hi-Fi Z in feeling that you're in some kind of sports car from the future. But the two cars are set up very, very differently. Whilst the Hi-Fi Z is certainly much more sport oriented and certainly a little bit more dynamic in that respect, the Hi-Fi Y is immediately more geared towards comfort and you feel that as soon as you take hold of the steering wheel it's very very light and i know yeah okay chinese cars always have light steering but this feels like something else it is fingertip light but it's not unintuitive i mentioned this with the hi-fi x and the hi-fi z videos that there is something that hi-fi do with the touch inputs the steering the brakes and the acceleration on their cars that just feels just so, I think were the words that I used last time. There's just something very, very natural about them. You slip into it almost like, like a comfortable slipper. You know, it's just something that immediately feels natural to you. And they've got the exact same DNA here in the Hi-Fi Y. It just feels very, very comfortable straight from the off. Of course, light steering, not exactly a preference for us in Europe. We do like to have a little bit more feel in our steering, generally because we've got more fun roads to drive around. But if you're to take it on face value as a car that will get you from A to B with the least effort possible, the Hi-Fi Y is looking like a very good contender for that based on our drive of it. It just feels very, very smooth and very, very comfortable and very, very quiet as well. The noise dampening on this car is incredible. They've got 3M insulation all over the front motor in apparently 40 areas where it would normally be quite loud and it's just super quiet even under full load can you hear anything apart from a little bit of wind noise around the mirrors that's it it's just super silent here. it's like an opera house it's incredible how well they've kept all the sound out of this car it's super super peaceful if you don't like that you can actually put sound effects on there not car sound effects like v6 v8 like in the avatar you get instead more kind of space age noises, something like you might find from the Jetsons or something like that kind of thing. Quite interesting sounds. But no, it is a comfortable car to drive. Performance is also pretty decent. That comes from, well, we have a twin motor version in our car. Twin motor and single motor versions both get 
a rear mounted motor with 247 kilowatts and 410 newton meters of torque which is certainly decent performance if you get the dual motor version we also add an additional front mounted motor with 124 newton uh, kilowatts of power on there and 210 newton meters of torque for a combined 371 kilowatts and 610 sorry 620 newton meters of torque so it's pretty quick if i put it into sport mode and floor it at 50 kilometers per hour i immediately get shoved into the back of my chair it's absolutely rapid certainly not quite as rapid as other performance cars in this category that are doing that kind of thing in 3.8 seconds it is a comfort oriented car we're not going to go over the top in this one but 4.9 well 4.7 seconds sorry does still feel pretty quick if you get the single motor versions that will get you to 100 kilometers per hour in 6.8 6.9 seconds depending on your battery size speaking of battery sizes you get a choice of two in this car you get a 76.6 kilowatt hour battery only available on the single motor that will get you 560 kilometers of range on the cltc cycle if you go for the bigger battery that's 115 kilowatt hours and that will get you up to 810 kilometers of range that's over 500 miles on the single motor version and 765 kilometers which is still very impressive on the dual motor version. I mean, you could effectively drive around for a whole week, possibly even two, without ever having to recharge this car. That's how impressive it is. And I believe for a full battery electric car, it's probably the best in category for this size of car. It's certainly more so, more than you can get in a Neo ES6, which we're gonna drive soon. So we'll check that out. One other thing I need to mention is of course the charging. You get DC fast charging, on this car up to 140 kilowatts so it's not quite as quick as some of the other cars out there but it'll probably do about 30 to 80 percent in about half an hour don't have any official statistics for that but it'll be adequate i mean given that you get a range of up to 810 kilometers i don't think you're going to be charging this car quite as often as you might be in some other cars so it's very impressive as we talked about in terms of ride comfort we get continuous damping control which does feel very good. And actually, dynamically, it's not that bad either. We did get to hustle it a little bit before. Didn't feel completely out of its depth at all. Didn't feel like it was wallowing around anywhere. But certainly, it's soaking up all the bumps, no problem. And the four-wheel steering does help in that regard because four-wheel steering, as I mentioned, it will crab your car. So it'll turn the wheels at the back the same direction as the front when you're at high speed to give you more stability. And it'll turn them in opposite directions when you're at slow speed to give you a tighter turning circle. Something I'm gonna show you in a second when the traffic lights go green for us. I'll show you how tight that turning circle is. Only 5.6 meters. It's very, very effective in practice. Now, in terms of our autonomous driving systems, sadly, we can't test them today. They're not active, but we are assisted by a whole bunch of, system, of radars and cameras and things, as well as that HERSI LiDAR system up there. It will, it's, it will do highway driving, so we don't have any city sort of NGP or anything like that inside the Hi-Fi Y. They're working on that, I believe, because of course, being a high-tech brand, they're gonna to wanna to be pretty successful in that area. But they do have, to support their autonomous driving system, a NVIDIA Orin X chip, 254 tops, not quite the same as in a Neo or a Leoto, nevertheless, certainly plenty of processing power there. But sadly, we don't get the chance to show it. I'll show it you in a future video if we get a chance to. So here's that turning circle. Look at that, effectively we've just done a U-turn within two and a half lanes, something like that. That's pretty impressive. Now I mentioned Neo and Lee Auto there. They are targeting this car at the ES6, I believe, and the Lee Auto L7 because they're pretty much in the same price category and the same size category. This car, is 4.938 meters long, I believe, and 1.958 meters wide, so certainly a bit narrower than the Z and the X, and 1.658 meters tall. But it's got a very impressive wheelbase of 2.95 meters. In such a, in a car only 4.93 meters long, 2.95 meter wheelbase, almost three meters, very big. It's got a lot of space in the front here and in the back as well. It's actually the longest wheelbase in this category, apart from the Mercedes-Benz GLC 300 
long wheelbase, which of course is a China only car. I mean, it's just super impressive in terms of NVH. I know the numbers are lower than the competition, so impressive on that front and very simple to drive. We also get automatic parking on this. We did try that out. It apparently isn't the latest version, so it wasn't quite as good when parking next to another car, but it certainly parked in a space on its own, no problem at all. But yeah, overall, I just think this is a very, very comfortable place to be. You've got all the tech stuff that you would need in here to keep you and your passengers, and if you get the screen here, keep your kids happy in the back as well. And it just feels very, very pleasant to drive. So has Hi-Fi's first venture into the world of the ordinary diluted this brand's value at all? Not one bit. Whilst the Hi-Fi Y may be slightly less outlandish than its brothers, the Z and the X, this car is still packed full of high-tech and gadgetry inside. Honestly, probably a little bit more than it needs to at times, but it does set this car out from the competition and does Hi-Fi a lot of justice. It's also refined in a way that very, very few other cars are. It's enormously practical, and if the Europeans were not taking Chinese cars seriously before, this car demonstrates every single reason why they should be. The Chinese are coming and they're coming prepared. This is an excellent car and it's gonna eat your lunch if you're not careful. Thank you for watching and if you do, thank you for subscribing and we'll catch you next time.